Good evening, everybody. It is 7 o'clock on Wednesday, which means it is time for the By His Blood Ministries online Bible study. I'm going to get on here and like and share it real quick. All right. I pray that everyone is having a good day. Trying to figure out how to get that off of my screen. There we go. All right, let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come together to study your holy word, Lord. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for bringing your word into our lives, Lord. We thank you for the instruction that we receive. And Lord, we pray that we are the obedient servants that you ask us to be, Lord. Lord, be with us, lead us, guide us, direct us, Lord. Allow us to apply these things to our lives, Lord, so that we may be more, more, more able to serve, Lord, that we may be better servants, that we may be the, the, the ones that you have asked us to be, Lord, and that we may be the ambassadors to Christ that you designed us to be, Lord. Lord, be with us today. Let us ask questions. Let us grow. Let us learn and let us understand that there's always more that we can know. We need to get past the surface and get into the meat of your word, Lord. As Paul said, there are some that are, are not ready for the meat, Lord, but Lord, let us be ready for the meat. Let us be ready for the, the, the meat of your word so that we may be able to, to fully understand you, Lord, and, and fully come to know you. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. All right. So, uh, last week, we did not do an online Bible study, but we did ask that Y'all read chapter 12 and be ready for, for some questions. So let's start off with that. Do we have any questions on chapter 12 before we get started with it? Any questions? Any questions at all? I would like to be able to see the questions if they are coming up. I do not know why the phone is not allowing me to see the questions. Hmm. All right. Okay, do we have any questions? Let me get over here and look on this. All right, I don't see any questions yet. I apologize. Let me try to get on a different link here so that I can see better and... Uh, I don't know why it wasn't letting me see the questions. All right, there we go. I see. All right. Any other any questions? I don't see any questions coming up so far. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So chapter twelve. Chapter twelve. What we see is we see that chapter twelve is following right after the Lord had uh, gotten upset with the people because they were not satisfied with what he was providing for them. He was providing food for them. He was providing protection for them. He was providing all of these things. We see that uh, they complained and complained and complained to Moses. Moses prayed and he asked for help. Um, basically said, look, if you're not going to give me any help and, and you're going to put all these people on me, just, just kill me now. <laughs> and uh, the Lord did not kill him. The Lord gave him the help that he asked for with the elders. And um, from there, we go into uh, the people receiving the meat. But, you know, the Lord provided so much meat that the people that were, were, were truly greedy and the people that were truly unsatisfied, they overindulged and they ended up being sick. And uh, it was a plague. So... We see that the Lord is providing and we see that the people are complaining. Um, therefore, we can definitely see a tie into our society. We also see that, that Moses came to the Lord 
in, in a true way. He, he truly spoke his problems and truly, uh, truly asked the Lord for help. He, he, I mean, he poured himself out, and, and that's, that's what we need to be doing. Now, when we get into chapter 12, what we need to keep in mind is we need to keep in mind what we see in chapter 11. Chapter 11, we see Moses crying out to the Lord. So Moses asks the Lord, this is 11, 11. So Moses asks the Lord, why have you brought such trouble on your servant? Why are you angry with me? And why do you burden me with all these people? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth so that you should tell me, carry them at your breast? A nursing woman carries a baby to the land that you swore to give their fathers. Where can I get meat to give these people? For they are crying to me, give us meat to eat. I can't carry all these people by myself. They are too much for me. If you are going to treat me like this, please kill me right now. If you are pleased with me, don't let me see my misery anymore. So he's saying, look, if you if you are angry with me, end it now. Um... So why did God put the plague on, on Aaron's wife and not Aaron too? That's a good question. And um, we are going to get into that right now. What, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read all of chapter 12. And then we are going to get into it and, uh, and break it down. Starting with verse 1, it reads, Miriam and Aaron criticized Moses because of the Cushite woman that he married. For he had married a Cushite woman. They said, does the Lord speak only through Moses? He does, does he not also speak through us? And the Lord heard it. Moses was a very humble man, more so than any other man on the face of the earth. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, you three come out of the tent of meeting. So the three of them went out, and the Lord descended in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent and summoned Aaron and Miriam. When the two of them came forward, he said, listen to what I say. If there is a prophet among you from the Lord, I make myself known to him in a vision. I speak with him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my household. I speak with him directly, openly, not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord. Why were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? The Lord's anger burned against them and he left. As the cloud moved away from the tent, Miriam's skin suddenly became diseased. This is what Shirley's talking about. And white as snow. When Aaron turned toward her, he saw that she was diseased and said to Moses, My Lord, please don't hold against us this sin we have so foolishly committed. Please do not let her be like a dead baby whose flesh is half eaten away when he comes out of the mother's womb. Then Moses cried out to the Lord, God, please heal her. The Lord answered Moses, If her father had merely spit in her face, wouldn't she remain in disgrace for seven days? Let her be confined outside the camp for seven days. After that, she may be brought back in. So Miriam was confined outside the camp for seven days, and the people did not move on until Miriam was brought back in. After that, the people set out from Hazareth and camped in the wilderness of Paran. All right. So the first thing that we, we need to unpack here, and we're going to get to Shirley's question, because it's a very, very, very good question. The first question we're going to get to is, what are Miriam and Aaron criticizing when they're criticizing Moses because of the Cushite woman? Now, this would mean that he had married someone since Zipporah. So there's two, well, there's three things um, that this could be. Number one, uh, he married another woman while Zipporah was at her father's home because it says that she stayed with her father and while Moses was out uh, in the wilderness. Um, two, it could mean that Zipporah has passed on and, um, and, and, and he remarried. And three, it could mean that Zipporah is the Cushite woman because uh, remember, she is of a different people than Moses. Now, what does this have to do? Why would they criticize her? Well, she would have been a woman of color. She would have been um, Ethiopian. 
um, from the Sudan. So Ethiopian, Nubian, um, dark skin. She would have looked different, and they were criticizing because of her. But then it gets down to the real root of the problem. Here they are, they're criticizing her, well, him, because of her. And then it says, does not the Lord speak through us also? Truth of the matter is, one, Scripture does not give us a definitive answer if Zephora was the Cushite woman. Two, um, the criticism was, was not really about the Cushite woman at all. It was more about Moses' position in Israel. Moses was the man, and Aaron and Miriam, uh, they were actually seeking some of that glory. They were looking for some of the recognition for the things that Aaron did. Aaron did great things for the Lord, but his relationship and Moses' relationship were completely different with God. Moses was, was the one whom the Lord spoke with, spoke with directly, and Aaron was the one that delivered the message to the people because, as Moses had said, he was not a good public speaker, whether it be because of a, a speech impediment of some sort, because of a fear of public speaking, whatever it may be, he was not a good speaker. So what they were saying is they were saying, why is, why is Aaron not receiving this? But Moses, Moses wasn't seeking glory. Moses was a humble man. And for them to attack him, it angered the Lord. But then the Lord gets into it even further. Remember back in 11 when I just read that prayer that Moses said? That's not how you usually pray to the Lord. That might be how you talk to a friend. That might be how you talk to someone who you have a deep, personal relationship with. God says that if Moses was merely a prophet, I would speak to him in visions. I would speak to him in dreams. But it's not that way. Moses is my servant. And he says he's faithful in all my household. So the Lord is taking Moses and he's putting him above that place of being a prophet and putting him into the place of a faithful servant which is the same place that Abraham held. So, so God doesn't show favoritism. His love is equal. But the love that Moses showed the Lord showed a dedication and a loyalty to the Lord that was like that of Abraham. Aaron, even though he did great things, his heart was not as, 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 as pure towards the Lord as Moses's was, and that is shown in this argument. Now, what we see is we see that the Lord always defends his people and that he is always just. They were attacking Moses unjustly. They were attacking Moses for something that didn't even have to do with the real problem. So it comes down to the point of where he issues out, he divvies out a punishment to Miriam. Her skin suddenly became disease. Now, this, if we, and I, I can go back to chapter 2 in uh, Genesis, but I actually just got finished with the marriage counseling, so we'll go to Ephesians chapter 5. In Ephesians chapter 5, it says, starting with verse 25, Husbands, love your wives just also as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her to make her holy, cleansing her in the washing water by the word. He did this to present the church to himself in splendor without spot, wrinkle, or anything but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hates his own flesh but provides and cares for it, just as Christ does the church, since we are members of his body. For this reason, man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Surely the answer is, because by Miriam being afflicted with this, it was just as much, if not more, of a punishment to Aaron 
because of the love that he had for Miriam and because he understood what marriage truly was. Remember, Aaron was of the priestly order. Now, the other thing is, when Miriam got sent away from the camp, it was a separation, not just from society, not just from the Israelites, but it was a separation from Aaron also. If Aaron had also been sent out of the camp, they could they would have not been separated. They could have stayed joined. But because of the, the Levitical law, she was separated out. So it could have been Miriam or it could have been Aaron, but Aaron is the one that had that understanding and it and it and it and it and it hurt him just as bad, if not worse, to see Miriam like that. Now it is interesting um, that after that, we see that uh, that he says to Moses, "My Lord," with a lowercase L. Please don't hold this sin against us that we have so foolishly committed. So Aaron sees the error of his ways, and he comes after she's been struck. Now, a lot of times, that is what it takes us. It takes us a, a consequence of some type before we come to repentance. And unfortunately, that is human nature. We are born of a sin nature. We are born, and we will do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it until we get caught or until there is a consequence. And when there's a consequence, it's a red flag and we are like, uh-oh, I better repent. So Aaron didn't go to the Lord directly. Aaron had that ability. Aaron was of the priestly order. Remember, he is one of the ones that, that took the request of the people to the Lord. But instead, he goes to make amends with Moses because not only did he understand that he had wronged Moses with the criticism, he also understood from what God had said that Moses held a position like that of Abraham, which was higher than any priest because of the love that Moses had in his heart. So the, the will of the Lord was communicated through Moses, and then Moses took that message and delivered it to the people through Aaron. So why did Moses get this position? Because of Moses' love and loyalty. Not because he was a but not because he was any higher or, or any better, just his relationship. He took it personally. And, and we need to take this and we need to run with it in our lives. We need to see how the Lord rewards loyalty. There is a difference between love and loyalty and favoritism. God is not showing Moses any type of favoritism. God is showing an appreciation for the love that Moses had. And it's the same type of love that he has been crying out for from his people since the beginning of time. It's the same love that he is crying out for with the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's the same type of love that he is crying out for from us. Was Moses a perfect person? No. Was Moses without flaw? No. As a matter of fact, Moses couldn't even cross into the promised land. He went through all this and he delivered the people right to the edge and he couldn't go in. So he was not without fault. Was David without fault? Because David was in this group also. No, David was not without fault. So we have to understand that God does respect and God does honor a true relationship. There is a difference between there is a difference between believing and worshiping, and having a personal relationship. Moses had the personal relationship. The personal relationship is what God wants. God will always honor your worship. God will always honor your love. God will always honor your loyalty. But a personal relationship is where we start to truly get to know the Lord and truly see what the relationship with the Lord can look like. And we see that Moses, once, once Aaron comes to him and says, says, Lord, 
Please don't hold this sin against us that we have foolishly committed. Please don't let her be like a dead baby whose flesh is half eaten when it comes out of his mother's womb. Moses forgives. It's a trait that God's people who have a personal relationship, it's a trait that God's people have. They forgive. You want to see someone who doesn't have a relationship with the Lord? It's the person that doesn't forgive. It's the person that doesn't forgive and it's the person that doesn't repent. Moses, of course, forgives him immediately and asks for her to be healed. And the Lord blesses her and grants her that healing. However, to show and to demonstrate a, a, a consequence for her actions, she is separated like anyone else would be for those seven days, according to the Levitical law. So chapter 12 is a short chapter, but it is so full of important information. Let's unpack it. And like I said, I would love some questions. I would love some questions if you have them. The first thing that we need to, to take away from this, because okay, now we, we know it, we've read it, we've, we've seen the explanation, the biblical, um, you know, the theological points. Now let's take some things that we can unpack and let's take some things that we can apply to our lives. Number one, Miriam and Aaron criticized Moses because of the Cushite woman. And then said, does the Lord only speak through Moses? Does he not also speak through us? Now, this is not something that should have been a criticism to Moses at all. If they didn't understand or they felt like that, uh, that Moses was, was the favorite child or whatever, they should have taken that directly to the Lord. They should not have criticized Moses over something trivial. So what can we take away from that? Well, the first thing that we can take away is one, Let's be careful before we criticize other people. Let's try to see things, one, from their point of view. Let's try to see things from the Lord's point of view. Two, if we have a problem, let's speak that problem. Let's not, let's not hide it behind something that's not real. See, they didn't want to, they didn't want to say, hey, we're jealous. Hey, we're, we're, we're wanting some glory. Instead, they said, you know what? We're going to try to tear Moses down with something else. If you have a problem with a brother or a sister, bring that problem directly to them and, and hash that thing out. The Lord does not want to see us uh, bickering and fighting amongst ourselves. And, and quite frankly, it is why the church is virtually powerless in society today. I'm not saying that Christ is powerless I said that the church is virtually powerless today. You look at the things that are going on in our world, you look at the things that are happening all around us, and you hear the church crying out, Oh my goodness, oh, oh God's people. No, the reason that, that these things are happening is because God's people can't sit in a room and not argue and criticize each other. The criticism, the bickering back and forth, the jealousy, um, whether it be because of denomination, whether it be because of race, whether it be because of sex, whether it be because of whatever it may be, it's ripping the church apart. That's not what God wants, and it renders us powerless. We need to be of like mind, and if we have issues with each other, we need to speak those issues. And if you're too cowardly to speak your problem to your brother or to your sister, then just keep it to yourself. Pray about it. Pray about it. Pray about it. Pray for courage. Pray for strength. Pray for understanding. Pray for discernment. And maybe, just maybe, you can work through that problem without having to bring it to them. But I, eventually, eventually the peace that you will get is you need to take this problem to your brother or to your sister. The next thing that, uh, that I, I want you to see is, is just how much the Lord respected Moses' humbleness. See, Moses could have, could have just blown trumpets about himself. Moses did so many great things. And he was the center and the focal point of the people. And he always gave glory to God. 
While Miriam and Aaron were seeking glory for themselves, it says that Moses was more humble than anyone on the earth. So understand that you being humble and being able to recognize that it's not you that's so great, but he who dwells within you, it goes a long way. When you start to glorify the Lord and you start to realize it's not me, it's him, and you start to, to, to say, you know, I'd be nothing without him. I, I can't exist without him. He is my savior. He is my, my, my life. He is the, 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 the truth. Then, then we can start, truly start to see some rewards. Notice that Moses wasn't, wasn't jealous of anybody. Moses didn't have those problems because he knew it wasn't him and he knew it wasn't other people. If something happened that was great, he knew it was the Lord. And he got to be with the Lord personally. See, you've been given the power. I've been given the power. Anyone who's come to know Jesus Christ has been given the power to have the type of relationship that Moses had with the Lord. You can speak directly to the Lord. And you can be faithful. And you can be a servant just like Moses. You have that ability, but are you willing to do it? That's the next thing that we need to take away from this. You know, we, we, we see a chasm between man and God. But who created that chasm? It wasn't God. We can go all the way back to Genesis 1 and 2 and see how close God was with Adam and how Adam and Eve existed prior to the original sin. It's man and the sin of man that's caused that chasm. And as we become more faithful servants, what we see is we see the sin start to dwindle away and we get to see the relationship start to blossom. And, you know, we may not, we may not be on the mountain and, and have the Lord's hand over our face. We may not come down glowing, but we have the ability to speak to the Lord directly. And if we listen, you see, that's the next part of it. We like to pray. We like to complain. We like to ask for things. We like to gripe. We like to do a lot of things. But do we like to listen? An important part of your prayer life needs to be Listen, pray, honor, ask, glorify, listen. Listen to what the Lord is telling you. And when you listen, he's not going to give it to you in riddles. He's going to give it to you truly. Now, now, how do you listen? How do you get what the Lord wants you to hear? Well, one way, like I said, is through prayer and through listening. And the other way is through the reading of Scripture. As you read Scripture, these questions are answered for you. The, the, the answer to every problem that you may have does lie within these Scriptures. But are you willing to develop that relationship like Moses? Are you willing to take the time to pray, not just pray, but listen? And then two, are you willing to take time to spend in God's word every day? It, it, I know you're like, pastor's a broken record about this scripture. Like, you're absolutely correct, 100% correct. I am a broken record when it comes to reading scripture. And how do I know this? Because I've seen the way that it's affected my life. I've seen the way that it's affected other people's lives who truly read and truly thirst for the answers of God. Now, you can make any excuse you want. I'm not a good reader. I don't comprehend. But, well, you know what? You're not a good reader. You don't comprehend. Grab a children's Bible. You think I'm kidding? There are many people who the first Bible I gave them was a children's Bible. You are without excuse. Can't read? There's 50 apps on your on your cell phone, the same one that you hold in front of your face for 8 to 10 hours a day. There are 50 apps that will read that scripture to you. 
They will read it to you in every translation. I can hit it on my phone right now and I can have it read to me in Korean. I wouldn't understand it, but I can have it. I have that option. So you are without excuse. So he's not going to speak to you in riddles. He's not going to give you the runaround. He's going to speak to you in plain language and he's going to tell you exactly what he wants you to be. He's going to tell you exactly how to act. He's going to tell you exactly how to carry yourself. And guess what? You're going to fall short, just like me, just like everyone else. But you're going to get better at it. Every time you fall short, you'll grow a little bit closer. Falling short is not the problem. Remaining faithful after you fall short. That's the hard part. The next thing that we need to see is we need to see that God protects the faithful. Moses being humble and Moses being, you know, Moses was not meek. Moses was very strong. But, but we see that Moses, as he's being criticized by his brother and his brother's wife, you know, he doesn't lash out at him or anything. He takes the abuse. God is the one that steps in and says, whoa, why are you criticizing? Why are you insulting? Why? Are you messing with my servant, Moses? What is it that you think you are doing? As a matter of fact, the plain language that he says in, in verse 8 is, it, it, it says, I speak with him directly, openly, not in riddles. He sees the form of the Lord, so why are you not afraid to speak against my servant, Moses? Aaron Miriam, you see the relationship that Moses has with me. You see how much he loves me. You see how we communicate and you see how I reward him. Why in the world would you not be afraid to lash out at him? And that, that right there is what people should see when they see you. I don't want to mess with him because he's so close to the Lord. I know that he's under the Lord's protection. And when people lash out at you and people criticize you and people bash you, guess what? You don't have to lash back. You don't have to get into that Facebook fight. You don't have to get into the argument in the parking lot. You don't have to punch the dude in the face. You don't have to do any of that because God will protect you. How do I know this? Go look at my Facebook. Go look at 180's Facebook. Go look at the private chat rooms that they have in Oxford and everything else and hear the things that have been said about me. I don't care. It's taken care of. And if everyone agreed with what you did, if no one ever has a criticism for you and no one ever has a problem, then you're not doing it right. The next thing that we need to see is we need to see that the Lord is always willing to forgive. See, even though Aaron and Miriam had done this, and even though there was a punishment, even though there was an earthly consequence, the earthly consequence of their actions were her being confined outside the camp for seven days. That was the earthly consequence. So even though there was an earthly consequence, God forgave them. God didn't keep her separated. God could have made it. God, God could have struck her dead. But instead, he said, I'm going to give you a period of separation, and then I'm going to give you back. Amen, Samantha. Amen. Samantha Campbell, she said, she said, forgiving yourself after falling short is the hard part. And I've, I've, got, I've got something to say about that. You know, one of the things that we see throughout the Old Testament, you know, and we're going to see it big time when we get into Judges and um, into, uh, into, into the, that part of the, the Old Testament. Um, also, when we get into the prophets, we see it a whole lot. But that is the theme of idolatry. Now, we have come to a place where we hold ourselves to such a high standard that we make ourselves idols. We claim we claim that the blood of Christ is enough to atone for all of our sins. And now, why did I say that we claim? Because, because it's the truth, so we're claiming the truth, okay? But 
we, 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 we sin, we fall short, we cry out, and we come to the Lord with a repentant heart. And I believe that we come with truly repentant hearts. And when I say this, I say we because I, I suffer from the same thing. I, I beat myself up over the, the things that I've done wrong. But we, we, we cry out to the Lord and we say, Lord, forgive me. And you know what happens? Jesus Christ, the blood of Christ washes over us and takes away that sin. It washes it away. But then we put ourselves in a position higher than God. And we say, you know what? That forgiveness wasn't good enough. I'm going to hold this over my head. And the only thing that it does is it interferes with God's mission for us. Guys, Jesus didn't go to the cross in vain. Everything that Jesus did for us is 100% real. So when it says that we are justified through the blood of Jesus Christ, when it says that we have been sanctified through the blood of Jesus Christ, when it says that we will, we will have a spot in heaven through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when it says that Jesus came to die for our sins, for all who would believe, for all who would come to know him, it is 100% true. Learn from your mistakes. Don't forget your mistakes, but do not let your mistakes cripple you. I don't care if you've been to jail. I don't care if you're a drug addict. I don't care if you're a hooker. I don't care if you are a bookie. I don't care if you're a compulsive gambler. I don't care if you're an adulterer. I don't care if you are a, a serial killer. If you come to know Jesus Christ, he will wash all of that away from you. And when he washes that away from you, he has a purpose for you. And when you hold that stuff over your head and you don't forgive yourself and, and, and you, don't, uh, you don't allow the Lord, you, you don't accept the forgiveness that the Lord has given you, the only thing you're doing is you are interfering with that message that he is, he is saying, Look at it this way. We were just talking about receiving the messages from the Lord and, and, and it not being in riddles, not being jumbled up. Well, have you ever tried to talk on the phone and listen to the radio at the same time? See, there's a reason that when you're driving in your car and your Bluetooth kicks on, it shuts the radio off and it, the phone comes on. Because you can't listen to both things at once because you can't hear either one. So if you've got that message of I'm not enough, I'm not good enough, I'm falling short, I'm horrible, I'm awful, I'm this, you can't hear God saying in this ear, I am enough. I will sustain you. I will take you through this. I will lift you up. I have plans for you. I will be glorified through you. You can't hear it because of what you got coming in this ear. So um, yes, it's hard, but we've got to learn to do it if we want to truly serve we want to truly serve we've got to learn how to do it um do we man i feel like i i feel like i'm preaching a sermon today um what other questions or concerns do we have because like i said this is a, for such a small chapter this is such a big part of 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 just our, our faithfulness in general you know um the other thing that that i want to take away from this um and, and I'm going to close on this, um, unless we have questions, is, see, Miriam and Aaron didn't respect the fact that just because their relationship with God didn't look like Moses's, that God still loved them equally. You know, my relationship with, 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 with Christ may not look like Joey's. But it doesn't mean that God loves me any less or loves me any more. And Joey's relationship may not look like Dora's, but it doesn't mean that God loves Dora any more or Joey any less. And Dora's may not look like Shirley's, who's, who may not look like Brandon's, who may not look like Samantha's, who may not look like Nikki's, who may not look like Katie's, who may not look like... You, all of us have different types of relationships with God because God has different purposes and plans for each one of us. Let's respect the relationships that we have with God and understand that, that the relationship that God has with the people around us is important. It's good that we all have a different type of relationship with God. 
Because if we all had the same relationship, we wouldn't be able to come together for his purposes and do so many things. We would all be robotic and we would all be, uh, the, 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 the glorification would not be as great. I mean, if everyone, if everyone on earth was a drug addict and everyone got clean because of the Lord, it, it wouldn't be anything special. You know, if if everyone had if everyone had a sexual sin in their in their in their life and and it was removed by the Lord, it wouldn't be special. If everyone had 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 cancer and everyone was healed by the Lord, it wouldn't be special. See, it's these things that, that we do to ourselves and these things that happen to us that, that God takes away from us as individuals that allows the rest of the world to see how wonderful and, 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 and perfect God is. You know, be, be through to death that you are unique in God's eyes and God wants to have a different type of relationship with you than he has with me. That is a uniqueness that can truly be celebrated. Because if you look at the world's definition of uniqueness, it never becomes unique. When I first got tattoos, they was unique. It was frowned upon. Now everyone has tattoos. At one time, it was considered unique to have colored hair, but everyone has a different color hair every single day, except for me, who can't grow hair. You know, it, 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 everyone, everyone in the world is striving to be different, but all they're doing is they are conforming and, and becoming what everyone else is. Celebrate the fact that you can be unique in God's eyes and you can have a unique plan and a unique purpose that no one else has. It's so amazing. And, and Miriam and Aaron did not respect that or, or want that. They wanted Moses' relationship. And Moses' relationship was different. Just like Aaron's was different than Eliphaz's or, 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 or any of the other people in the camp. So, you know, celebrate your uniqueness in the Lord is what I'm trying to say. Don't be jealous because of someone else's relationship with God. You know, you want the things that they have in God? Then put in the work that they're putting in. You want more understanding? Then read more scripture. You want more relationship? Then pray more. You want to, you want to discern? Then listen. You've been, you've, been, you've been given the Holy Spirit. So, so by all means, by all means, you know, be unique and be proud to be unique in the Lord. Don't worry about being unique in the world because there is no unique in the world. I mean, I'm serious. You can you want to challenge me on that fact? I mean, there is there is no uniqueness in the world. It's a copycat world. But you can be unique in God by all means. Do we have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints? Love the complaints. Questions, comments, concerns, or complaints? All right, all right, all right. Um, well, if we don't have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, um, I do have a prayer request, a special one today. Um, please be in prayer for Eric Baget. Uh, he is in the hospital dealing with some medical conditions. Um, also, uh, be in prayer for uh, just for the church in general, um, nothing bad. Just always be in prayer for the church. Um, Shirley, are we doing? When are we doing laundry ministry again? You can uh, answer that uh, as we pray, and I will announce that after prayer. Um, with that being said, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time that we we're able to spend together, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for making us all unique, Lord. You've created each and every one of us in your image, Lord. But, but your image is so diverse and so, so just beautiful, Lord. Let us just bask in your glory and understand 
that you love each and every one of us, Lord. Let us take time from our lives and build our relationship with you, Lord. Let us grow in our love for you. Let us grow in our knowing you. Let us see the small things, Lord. Let's, let us see the things that you do in our everyday lives. Let us celebrate our, our, our spouses. Let us celebrate the, the roofs that we have over our heads. Let us celebrate the jobs that you've blessed us with. Let us celebrate the, the transportation that we have to go to and fro. Let us celebrate the people that love us. Let us celebrate the, 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 the people that don't love us, Lord. Let us forgive one another for the problems that we have, Lord. But above all things, Lord, let us love you and let us glorify you with all that we have. Let us, let us come to that point where we realize that the good that is in our lives is you and that, that you, will, you will take that evil away from us, Lord, that you are willing and, and, and not just willing, but you have removed our sin through the precious blood of your son, Jesus Christ. You have made us blameless in your eyes through his suffering, through his pain, and through, through his willingness to go to that criminal's cross on our behalf. Lord, we thank you. We thank you with all of our hearts for saving us and for bringing us to that point where we now have the choice. We now have the choice of being like everyone else or being what you want us to be, Lord. Let us prayerfully consider doing the right thing, Lord. Let us each and every one take the relationship that you are giving us and Lord, let us glorify you in the unique and, and wonderful ways that you have designed us to. Let us all be the individuals that you have made us. And let us respect each other. Let us love each other. And let us know that if we can come together with the commonality of Christ, that we can overcome all things. However, it's going to take unity in your kingdom, Lord, and the only one that can restore order is you, Lord. So we cry out to you, Lord. We cry out for order. We cry out for peace. We cry out for direction. And we cry out so that we may see your glory each and every day. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen. Amen, amen. All right, Shirley, uh, if you could please... On the uh, By His Blood Ministry page, I don't know if you can uh, do it without approval, but uh, or if you could text it to Nikki, the time and uh, for the laundry ministry and what we need. Uh, we've got a group uh, coming in. Uh, Haley Johnson's church from North Carolina wants to come in and hand out some coats and some other things. Um, so if you could send that information to Nikki so that I can send it on to Tim and uh, we can get it posted, I would love to get a, uh, a good turnout. So um, with that being said, I love y'all. I, I pray that each and every one of y'all have a good day, a good night. And um, I, I truly pray that, that we all spend some time um, evaluating our relationship with God and uh, and bringing it to a better place. God bless each and every one of y'all. We will talk to y'all soon. Some of y'all see bright and early in the morning.